That right there was the cheering of all 74 of you still here around watching us. Welcome back. I am the help. With me is Hot Hot Hot. Hi, Win Kane, here to bring you the final game of week three of Judgment. Hi, Win Kane, what are you thinking about right now? Oh, man, I'm. I, I can't. I'm, I'm just kind of humbled by the, uh, the awesomeness that is Judgment. I know it was kind of uh, in the during the draft when we were going through it, we were like, oh my god, we have to replace like 25% of the players. But you know what? We had a lot of players step up, we had a lot of captains step up. They went, they found some players, we're getting it through the matches, we're on time, it's 9.30, we're already in champs like for the finals, we're going to wrap this up just in time. That being said, I'm excited for some amazing uh, gameplay. Uh, we've right now, you know, the story of the night has been, oh my god, it's Afro Moo! And you know what? It is, oh my god, it's Afro Moo! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to see, you playing for the blue, or for the purple side here on Team Satsalo. We've seen one point three of their games so far, their last win against Team Zik, who was the defending champ from week two. But this week, we're seeing Apollo fresh from Korea. Uh, he was actually in Korea for week one, didn't do so hot, came back, played week two, kind of got up in the ranks, and this week he's now made it in the finals. So he's making a, you know, he's making a play here, making a run. He's got a tall glass of water to take on, though. Um, you know, what are you thinking? What do you know, so what do you know about this Team Apollo? Uh, what do I know about Team Apollo? I missed them actually week one um, because I didn't cast their games. Other people did. But I have heard nothing but absolute rumors of terror uh, coming from his opponents. Even in week one, they were like, he's a really strong player. He knows what's going on. He's got that map awareness. He's able to bring these mishmash teams together under his big Apollo-like banner and carry the weight of the sun behind him. That's right. I went godly on you. Um, <laughs> and as we as we approach this game, finally, um, it's gonna get it's gonna get absolutely blo bloody. I mean, this is the highest of high tier plays that we could find in Judgment or really anywhere that's coming out of the uh, out of uh, or not in the LCS. This is this is where great players go to be made. These are the fires of testament testimonial. You know what? I'll deal with that one later. <laughs> We already have our first picks coming out. We have Zach, who has been a pick or ban every single game. On Thresh isn't going to be here, but we have Nami showing back up. Nami, who we saw up in Vancouver to great effect time and time again. Um, and Oriana, and ooh, this, is, this, this looks like what it's going to be is a giant stack of ults. We have the focus of an AoE team uh, coming off our blue, and our red side... Um, is going to have to find a way to deal with that quick, fast, in a hurry. They're going to need to be able to poke this out. I want to see a Lux. I want to see uh, uh, Zerath. I want to see champions that are able to deal with this from the range. Because if you get close right now, you're going to get sucked into a tiny pool, bounced up several times, and unable to escape. Yeah, I know. Right now, um, I guarantee you that Nami is going to go to Satsalo. Satsalo was playing Nami before Nami was big. Um... As we saw last game, he said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and support Afro Moon. Why wouldn't you? I'd support Afro Moon. I wouldn't be as good, but I would do it too. And so, but that being said, Sasolo actually main support. His normal duo partner was Fujin, who is actually in the league um, more so as a sub because he's playing on the in the MCS, the Mobile Fire Championship or Mobile Fire Challenger Series. Uh, was not able to be full-time in the league, but that's, we are, that's Satsalo's like main duo partner. That's his main squeeze, you can even say. But in this case, he went ahead, called up his second main squeeze, Afro Moo. Which you know what? If Did you, you just Afro call Afro Moo his mistress? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We all know what goes on. You know, when the behind closed doors might be. Hey, might be as long as nobody as not as long as nobody touches GG, he's mine. I have his Blitzcrank hoodie from Pax. That's true. That's true. GG is mine. Uh, and here we go. Here's the answer to that problem we're talking about. We got Lux in there now. We have this great kind of engage slash disengage slash sacrifice champion known as Shen. Um, Fat picking up Rise because Fat doesn't like Fat doesn't like doing things. He likes just standing there and pumping damage out. Yeah, I mean, again, we've seen a Rise. Uh, well, uh, we've seen a Rise stupid. in almost every game. I, you know. <laughs> And we also, but I do have to know that Fat, um, for those that don't know Fat, Fat actually was on T in LCS season one uh, in the first half. Played for, I don't know if it was Vulcan, he played for some team. It wasn't Mars. Velocity. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't think it was Velocity. It was before Velocity uh, joined joined uh, after the split. But anyways, Pat was on week one. Played okay. He's a top laner. Used to play a lot with Otter, like back when Otter was doing his first like season two, like top of the you know, like to get breaking into the top fifty, top ten. Him and Fat used to do it quite a bit, and they had a really high win ratio. So they started doing uh, doing, and uh, and that's when I kind of met Fat. I met him at Pax, the same Pax where you caught that Blitz Trank hoodie. No big deal. So he, he's a super quiet Asian guy, super you know, super quiet, super nice. Um, but that being said, I don't know Ace the Jungler, Biaka. Yakiax D. Uh, don't know him. Don't know Huggy. <laughs> a lot of these players, Apollo, is just saying, you know what? You got your subs. I got mine. We're gonna we're gonna face off. And so right now, as we're gonna hop in here for the finals of oh wow, we're gonna see Aphromo and Ash. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this hard engage. They've got bindings from Lux. They've got the ultimate initiation of Ash Arrow. They've got Nami, who's got her. Prison for it's more of a counter engage because it's kind of hard to just initiate with, but it's more of a like, oh, you guys are all clumped up, bam, triple prison. Uh, not to mention her alt that's this massive tsunami of knock upness, and of course, J4 the Duckmaster. So, I mean, uh, you know what? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta come at you right here because I'm gonna say that you're saying that this is all hard engage. I'm saying this is all counter to hard engage. A lot of this is going to be used at range to keep the enemy team from being able to really choose the moments where they get to stack their ultimates. Um, you're gonna be using that binding to catch Zach away from the team once he tries to once he tries to get into position to try and hop on people. You're gonna have uh, Ash using the big arrow to keep. Uh, to keep Varus away and try to play that kind of a that kind of who has the better bow game. It's going to come down to really who's able to land these ultimates and in which order to who's going to win this game. This is a really for the first time kind of in anybody's game kind of situation. The helpful hand will go down on Aphromoo's team because you know <laughs> I got to stay true to my brothers uh, of League. Uh, before Lucian comes out, we got all band together. So I'm still giving him my helpful hand. But I gotta say, this is the first time where it's been teams straight up as far as power level, except for Shed. Shed yeah, can I mean, die fire. And these, <laughs> that's right. Are you are you putting a helpful hand on a team that has Shed? I have to. I have no choice. <laughs> Your hands are tied. You could say. <laughs> Woof. Yes, I could. Uh, you know, and I like I like this matchup. I think Fat's gonna have a strong matchup. He won't be able to stop Shen getting out of lane, but Fat is is well known for his farming. He used to play a lot of Cho'Gath. Uh, I think this Vlad will be a good play for them. They've got this double AP, their wombo combo of bubble onto Zach. Zach's going to fly in there and just really kind of start a fight. There's some potential here. Uh, they've got the Zyra ult on that. On that. So, I mean, I kind of see what you're saying here. I see that you're saying that Team Stops a little wants to play that. Hey, we're going to counter your hard engage with harder engage. Does that make yep. sense? Yep, I'll um, do that. So... I mean, that being said, I'm excited to see this go through. I think, the, like you said, if there were a power level, I think the power level between these two teams is pretty strong. Um, I want to see how Apollo does in this bot lane. I don't know his support, honestly. Um, but, you know, he's going to say, you know what, I'm going to go down here in bot lane. He, he's played at the top tier. He's played, eight, you know, in Korea. He's played against all the other top tier uh, 80s. So this could be a great match. All right, don't mean to interrupt you guys, but we do have a contest oh, going what? on on Facebook.com slash Media, which you can see. Check out the chat link below. Whoever guessed the KDA of Aframu, so kills, death, assists, like his score there, plus the CS, whoever is closest will win $10 in RP. So make sure you go over there real quick, jump in there and guess, and then at the end of this game, whoever's closest will win themselves some RP. Damn. So, yeah. What? Yeah, what are you going to go ahead and get? All right, since you've got the helpful hand on Aphromoo, what would you say? Uh, what would you guess? 18-3, uh, 12, uh, 2 15. Uh, Write it down. Go, I want to say, say 8 2 12. And like 312 CS. 8212? Yeah. I think he's going to be a little more supporty. That's what Ash does. Mm. You know what? We got the mysterious man behind the, the production. He's going to take him down to Dom. That's what I'm saying. All right. 
All right, this is that end of the game too. I'm saying. Yeah. You <laughs> not not like ten minutes in. Not ten minutes. Not, if, <laughs> hey, not. if they surrender at twenty, that's just. More <laughs> I'm saying if at if at ten minutes in you have two fifteen CS, you are farming multiple lanes. Congratulations, you are Heimerdinger. <laughs> I wonder what the maximum amount of CS you could get with a Heimerdinger in 10 minutes. Like, if nobody stopped your turrets and you just put them up in the lanes and stuff like that and just, like, ran through doing work, like, how much CS could you get? I'm not a math guy. That sounds like a job for a math guy named Dom the hell. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, wait, you're more of a science guy, right? Yeah. Science, bro. Okay. Science. I like, I like my experiments. I don't like, you know, figuring out what they're going to do beforehand. Um, whew. skin wind going down, uh, going down against me. It's all right. I gotta say, I really like woad ash, though. You don't see a lot of woad ashes. <coughs> Woo ad. All right, players out of the gate. We've seen some mind games on a couple of the matches so far at level one. I'm gonna say between in terms of engage at level one. I'm going to go ahead and give the level 1 here to the red team. Volley is a real strong level 1 engage. Or, sorry, good for level 1. If Satsala decides to take prison for level 1, he'll be less aggressive at level 1, but he'll still have a, you know, that's just one more ability they'll have if they decide to, to go aggressive. And, you know, Zach's not very strong in a level 1 situation. He's got his passive, but if he wants to go, if they want to go hard in level 1, he would have to take his, his Q, which is a slow. And I guarantee you, he's he's most likely not going to start. Oh uh, yeah, he's already started with unstable matter. Yep. But we do see they are. I don't know if they if they got the vision on that. I think they did. So right now we're going to just kind of see potentially red trade. Ooh. Now I'm all anxious. Yeah, I think we're going to see quite a bit, a, um, a lot of farming. Uh, that's exactly what the blue team wants to do. They want to farm and get real strong mid to late game team fights. And, I, you know, that's going to be hard for them. It's all going to be based on Zach. They got potentially Zyra uh, to, to possibly initiate, but it's, it's all kind of going to fall up here on Zach. Yeah, I don't like Zyra as an initiator. I like Zyra about... Four seconds into the fight with a really big kind of like, hey guys, we're still here kind of a thing. Kind of, I love her more of a rally flag. Zyra is an initiator. You see the plant come out and everybody just steps off of it and they're just like, nope. And it always seems to be wasted. Well, she's got a bind. Uh, a nice bind that goes through minions. And um, right now we're going to see Biddler going to go ahead, pick up blue buff. Zach is going to take blue buff and he's actually going to rotate up. I think they just maybe anticipated this he m might be going for like they're both just going to trade reds this is going to work out uh not sure whose favor this is going to work out because right now we don't see apollo with a, a, a ward in that try so they're definitely vulnerable to a red steal and oh, oh, oh i see what they're doing here they're like hey we're just going to wait for him to show up but <laughs> all right right now the jungle battle in favor of ace d jungler <laughs> He's gonna go ahead and take that red, and uh, J4 is is like, uh, guys, he he never showed up. <laughs> oh, we're so, gonna see uh, a, a gank here. There was a ward down. Shin will be safe. It's like he's gonna take a turret just for just as a love tag. He's gotta be careful Sometimes you gotta show off. Zen. Sometimes you gotta show what you're capable of. Yeah, I definitely feel like we're gonna see some somewhat of a farming game. I think it, I think it's gonna start off with both teams are gonna want to, you know, mechanically show us how CSing should be done, roughly, you know, six to ten minutes in the game, and then I think that's when we're gonna start to see the game get a little bit different. Uh, so that's where the, we're gonna, when the, the blue first six minutes are gonna be a Civ HD video, <laughs> <laughs> CSing how it should be done. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Or, well, that's why my theory is. I like this theory. I actually had to reload for a second. Um, I got bug splatted on, like, the last percent trying to get into the game. 
Doug's okay. blast too strong. You haven't missed much. Uh, right now, uh, if we were to just talk CS, uh, in the mid lane, we've got Oriana versus Lux. Pretty much even. Oriana with about six, five, six CS. Um, the, main, the main advantage right now is that Zach uh, got a free red buff. Oh, well, I do like free red buffs. So, Zach right now, level four, double buff, about to make a play here in mid lane against Jacob Hysteria. The Biddler had his, you know, basically his red buff stolen and wanted to make a play against Zach when he went for his. But so, right now, I don't know if they're going to pop a flash here or Ooh. not. Jacob, unimpressed by that, dealing a lot of damage <laughs> down on Zach. It's okay, he did show up, taxed a little bit of experience. But uh, we're actually seeing the reverse gank here by the Biddler. I'm not sure if Jacob's saying, like, hey, you know, I want to go back or not, but uh, for now. Ooh, looks like I made it back just in time. This is about, this, I can feel the tension. This is about to get <laughs> Is it there. right? It, the, it, it, you know, some people are like, oh, man, it's boring. Where's all the kills and stuff? But I feel like we're building up to that level six. People are going to hit level six, and there's going to be all sorts of engages. You know, and either top lane, mid lane, bot lane, like, every lane has... You know, a little bit form of CC, a little form of aggression. Like when they want to turn it on. Oh, those Nami heals making you feel better. Shen now rotating down mid. Gonna try to pull something off here. Gonna probably have to flash for it if he wants it. Nope. Just gonna straight out miss. Good jukes here. Juke the shadow dance. Also juke the light binding. Oh, now you got I got TM87 stuck in my head. <laughs> Got swagger, TM. Win eight, no kills at six minutes. <laughs> Remember this, man. I Got swagger, TM87. Zach now. Ace the jungler. Kind of. Doesn't quite have the range. Wrapping up, but. If, got, if got spotted out by a ward, actually, in this tip of this bush down here. Great ward placement, knowing that Zach wants those deep kind of engagements there. There's a slow going down. Slows on slows. Oh, Ooh. nice prison. That's going to be bad news for Huggy. You can't really that. change here with Satsalo with that Nami heal. Yeah, good ward placement here. And just that little bit of extra utility in the heal. Like, we got the... I mean, when you look at Nami versus Zyra, you have... Zyra, who has the oh, kind of... Oh, let's see some aggression here. Also, ooh. having to deal with the plant, that plant does a lot of damage early level. Yeah, needs to get away from that. But you have uh, you have Nami, who has the prison, which is better than just... Uh, which is better than a root. You have the heal. Um, I gotta say, I, I, like, I like Nami a little bit more than Zyra in this lane. Yeah, I actually agree. I think Nami is, um... I, I mean, to my opinion, just one of the more... Whatever happened to Tarek? Why is why am I not seeing like Tarek every game? Well, he gets outclassed by ranged uh, champions such as Nami, Sona. Dude, Zyra. just put on more diamond pants. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, uh, but about almost seven and a half minutes in this game, you can see that yeah, you know Shin is six now. Vlad six. Oh, we're gonna see some aggression here because Zach's gonna come up. Oh, Shin's not ready for this. There's the ult. Oh, had to flash the but oh the jungler going in. We'll get the pop-up on the R. Has his passive, so they can stay here on the turret. I just don't know if they're going to have enough damage. First one's going to go down to fat. I think, what? Oh, man, we had... First blood actually goes to Afromu. Yeah, Afromu sniping first blood down here in the bottom is going to stop that from being taken from his team. And then the Biddler is going to come in for a kill. Now trying to chase down Ace the Jungler, but Zack is just able to move so quickly. With that leap. The so top lanes are going to trade here, and it looks like. Poor Huggy. Oh, there's Ooh. a tidal wave. Taking the flash down. Great move. Ooh! Oh. Cataclysm up top is going to get hopped out of. Yeah, so Ace is going to hold this lane for a little bit longer. Vlad's going to show up. Actually, his passive's down. It doesn't have a lot of health. So there's not much he can do here, so he's probably going to back out here. You kind of have to when you know you're a big pile of goo with no goo to hop out of you when you get dead. Goose on goose. 
But down in the middle, it's a very, it's a very ladylike lane. It's a very royal baby lane. Everybody hanging out. Back to CSing. The gold lead, just 300 gold because nothing's really... Everybody's waiting for the things to happen. Grillo's going to miss his Jinx. combo. Bukayo just able to stay out in front of all these abilities, not getting caught today. The fish that always gets away. So, I mean, right now, I mean, we're seeing... It's pretty even match, right? The oh, it's absolutely kill. an even match in this you game. Get the first blood, you know, here on Aphromoo. That's a scary, right? Extra gold for Aphromoo. No bueno. Uh, uh, he's already got that, extra gold. got that BF sword. They're going to go in here and take this red buff again uh, because they started with it. They had the, the early timer. So we're going to see J4 actually fall behind uh, in terms of buff control, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, he is he is. But he has that kill, so he's, he's, you know, he's not... He's not doing too bad, and he's also got the same amount of farm. There's Zach just taxing that middle lane and then heading off on his way. <laughs> Top lane pushing in super hard against Shin, which is a kind of a kind of a great thing to do, especially when you have a range uh, like on Vladimir. You're able to just kind of pick in there, steal some health, laugh maniacally, swill the brandy, uh, and do some damage onto this turret. So Zach got in pretty deep. He got behind all the wards. Uh, is he gonna go through the river? If the Varus Zara Link could push up a little bit, he'd have a good shot. But oh, the Astro's oh, here down. Comes. Here it comes. Varus Hulk's going to land. There's the old Sasolo. Definitely going to go down. And Aphromoo's staying far enough back not to be picked up by any of that. But uh, still kind of, a, kind of a scary moment down there. All he wanted to do was drop that ward. He got it down just in time to see his doom incoming. It's that moment when you know something's going to go wrong, but there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it was good timing, too, because, uh, you know, about 12 seconds before Aphromoo had scouted it. Boop. And now he's just farming under turret. Something Ash can do incredibly well. Especially with a BF sword. Jarvan now waiting for any kind of hard engagement under here is not going to get his wish. He really wants to get involved in some fights right now, but he just seems to always be... Uh, Kind of a moment behind. Sometimes that's okay, but most of the time he's not. He's just not there. So Aphromoo actually getting out CS by Apollo. Only about by nine CS, but uh, <laughs> Apollo doing work. And now here comes the first dragon of the game. Yeah, this is pretty big control here. Um, they might, they'll definitely have, most likely have to concede this. This is not a team fight they want. Oh, there's a lot of alts here for the red team. Shen can come in at any point in time. Uh, this this dragon definitely free. And there's that. Oh, and Asho up. going down on Oriana. It's definitely gonna hit. And a bunch of damage landing on Oriana right there as Lux, the Lady of Luminosity, is just able to do her business. So right now, um, you know, they gave a first dragon. You know, but this is fine. This is exactly what I wanted to do. You know, if, if I'm in the role of Apollo, I'm saying, look, guys, I want to go even in lane. I may give up, you know, I may give up dragon, but I don't, you know, as long as we're not giving up turrets freely, uh, our CS is looking pretty good. Oop. We're not giving up a lot of kills. Um, this is a great, you know, this is good for us, I think, because they, they want to be that we get the right engage, we press R, we win. Yes. You know, that that's the simple man's turn. That, you know, that's the simple man's strategy. Obviously, there's a lot more that goes into this. Um, eh, not really. <laughs> I, I've seen this game. I know what happens. It's every every champion is Karthus. And there's the great push-up mid, everybody going back. Uh, Zach calling out the dive. He's going to want this. They're going to take this turret now. As soon as Zach gets up here and is able to hop onto Shen, here comes the leap. Oh, he got it. Get the oh. red bow. There, oh, nice flash. He just needs to get that auto attack. There's the slow. Good night, Jivhost. Thank you, Jive Host. And a little bit of proxy farming here. Because why not? I mean, and now with this next wave, should be able to take the turret. If they catch J4 out here, this is just bonus gold at this point. Swagger. Oh! Good play by Biddler, but uh, he's not long for this world. Woo. Nope. Oh. Gonna cataclysm them oh, in! Oh, that was place. I mean, he's still going to die from the last slingshot, but it was cute. That was that was a really good move. The cataclysm holding under, underneath the turret for a little bit longer, 
And the mandatory pause, it looks like everybody knows that Pat is behind the scenes. The game finally caught on to us. <laughs> uh, looks like uh, possibly lag. Um, just a quick restart. For those that don't know, there's been a lot of issues here uh, with Comcast as an ISP and uh, trying to connect to higher tier internet providers, those backbones, which has caused a lot of issues from bandwidth throttling for players that want to connect to Riot service. So this is not, you know, lag right now that a lot, a lot of people experience is not Riot's fault. So don't hate on Riot. They've, they've done nothing wrong. <laughs> Except make why it doesn't, awesome why doesn't Riot just buy Comcast? Uh, they're not that rich. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Well, it looks like you got back pretty quickly and I think they're going to go ahead and get this game restarted. But right now, Kill lead in favor of the blue team. They're up about a thousand gold. They took that top turret, which was a great, an you know, great answer to, you know, giving up that early dragon. So you know, some excellent ganks here by Zach. I gotta say, this Zach skin, his little pools that are all like squiggly bob on the ground, look really cool. Here comes the call, looking like for another dive. Zach oh, still got that pass up. Why not? Lux is gonna be in a lot of trouble. Ooh. Big bear, but here comes the Shinau. Bubbles on bubbles. Interesting. Yakuza going to take a lot of damage from that turret. Lux will finally go down, but holy crap between barrier, Lux shield, Shinau. Uh-oh, it looks like they got Afro who caught under a lot of CC. There's the cleanse. Forcing the flash. They're going to chase. Oh, the heal will save, but they're going to force Afro move out of lane. And this is right here is what I was talking about beforehand. This, this game is the highest of high tiers. Everybody wants to just put it onto the mood to win this. It's not just going to be that simple. Everybody's got to put 100% into this game at all times. And there's oh. the arrow coming down to the bubble. They're going to split this dude, and they're going to try and pick him off now. Uh, Aphromoo's back in the off. fight. He has enough health to get in here. Something's oh. got to give. Something's got to give. Nice prison. Aphromo a little close, but they've got Vlad on the back end. Vlad what? does have his ult. No ghost, no flash. He's got to deal with that Lux, though. He's going to have to dodge his light body and a taunt. Oh, the snipe. Looks like and was right there was a great move. The Bitler being able to spot out uh, spot out the movement coming off, <sighs> coming off of uh, off of fat, and really trying to capitalize on that. His team was actually able to play really well there, and somehow through all of that, Aframu still down here in this bottom lane. Oh, Bianca in a lot of trouble here. He's gonna eat the taunt. He's gonna eat the, eat the binding, the ignite plus the off attack from Jacob Hysteria, and just like that, kills are even. Gold is even too. This game, this game is, this game is the highest of tiers. It's like watching LCS, bro. Here on Judgment Week Three. <laughs> you said the worst. It's like LCS if they had to repick their teams every week. It's like if LCS was completely comprised of CLG. <laughs> hey, we got a former CLG member in here. That's what we need to do. We just gotta go find former CLG members and be like, bam! Welcome to Judgment. Welcome to Judgment. All right, well, Fat picking up a ton of farm here. A double creep wave on top. Uh, he's now 4-2, 132 CS. If we were to take a look at the CS lead, though, Ryars sitting at 150 CS. He is, he is 20 up right now, but that's not as impressive a number when you think that Ash got first blood as well as she gets bonus gold every time she kills a minion. Ooh, oh, and big engage engage. that bottom. Dash arrow followed by Cataclysm. Zaro for the counter engage. Huggy's going to go down. Not for Apollo picks up a kill, but I think we're going to see a double kill. And Afro Moo going to get double buff. Zach is trying to, trying to go in here. Oh, he's got the ult, but can he? Oh, the prison. Burn the shutdown. Double buff transferred back to Zach. I, I hope he says thank you. I hope somewhere in all time he says thank you. Oh, and there's the pick on the fat underneath the tower. But this isn't really a uh, Vladimir you want to mess with underneath this tower, even if you are Shen uh, and you're able to taunt him, because he can heal up on you enough that he, these tower shots aren't going to matter for the first four. Yeah, right now, um, you know, just Shen being bullied. And yeah, this Shen... bot lane turret going to go down. 
Shin wants to play like Wukong right now. He wants to get in these team fights. He wants to make big plays happen. He can't really go toe to toe with anybody single handedly up here. Zach, on the other hand, just pulling off dive master games. I feel like Zach is an incredibly similar champion, or at least feel, to how Nautilus was season two. Just getting underneath these towers and forcing the enemy team to be ready at all times and to not feel safe. So right now, even if Shen were to get on a lane, they could convert this into a 5v4. But it looks like Dragon is going to go down to the blue team. They want to fight here. Oh, man. I, I think it's just, you know, unfortunately Cataclysm was down. Ash Arrow just now coming back up. There's not something they could have capitalized on, but that could have been a possible 5v4. It could have. But then they would have also lost off turret. <laughs> And it looks like they still, they're still they still getting really close to losing this right now. Jarvan running up there right now. Will he be able to make any kind of play against Fat to really push him off of here? Or is it just going to be a double kill for him? Oh, if Cataclysm comes up. Boom! Fat's going to have to force the Flash. Also had to burn Ghost. But meanwhile, Jacob Hysteria in a lot of trouble. Doing a lot. Oh, here's the shit all double bubble. And an Ash Arrow was flying top lane. Just missed Fat. Oh, that might have spelled the end of that, maybe. But he's got to be careful here because we have a Nami Ash. I think Fat's in a lot of trouble. They're dedicating a lot of resources up top. Right now, Varus is going to be able to take down a second turret. All these words, all these really aggressive words coming out of Zyra are really allowing this bot push to be a lot more dangerous than it actually should be. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I mean, it's they did get Fat. It's kind of like watching Proxy Singed, right? Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's pushed up, he's overextended past River, he's just being this massive, you know, you just harassment that you can't really do. Oh, oh, and there's the binding down of Jacob Hysteria. Hysteria's going to fire that giant laser, but it's not going to be enough to pick anything up or even put enough damage down there to really matter. And they're going to pick up that kill pretty easily. And looks like the sax passive did come up in time, but they're going to donate another kill to Ash. But so far, they're going to trade a mid lane turret for it, and they also picked up a kill on Jacob. So right now, I mean, we can see if we're talking objectives, 4-1 to one turrets, it's even in Dragons. Right now, I, 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 like what, I like what the blue team's doing here. I think they're playing as a team. I mean... Absolutely. Uh, you know, unobjectively, like, I think this is... They're saying, look, Pat... Just go pressure lane, right? You're going to have an advantage pressing Shen. Shen, when you, we're going to have to dedicate resources to deal with them. And meanwhile, they're going to... I mean, just if, he could, if he could use his global, great. But uh, you know, the, arrow, the, the crystal arrow is not going to be just good enough. They actually have to com commit additional resources. And that gave Ooh, them a second tier bot turret as well as the mentor. Varus trying to steal that blue buff. Oh, so close. The arrow came over just as Lux popped that Lucid Singularity to keep it. And now Apollo out of mana. We've got most of these lanes pushing. We're starting to see the Shen split push kind of engage right now. He went ahead and rushed an Aegis, so he's going to be more of a support top laner. He's going to be like, I'm going to be a front line. I'm going to ult in when needed, but he's not going to have, you know, he doesn't have that Sunfire Cape, he doesn't have a Shiv or something, you know. Well, he honestly needed, he needed the Magic Resist, is exactly. what he's been working on here. He's been stacking that up pretty deep right now. He's now at 144 uh -oh. Magic Resist, taking a lot of that delayed damage off of, uh, off of that pressure that was up top. And more pressure coming up top now to take that second turret, that, that, that inner turret right there. Lux now holding her lane incredibly well. It's looking like we might get a 4v4 in the jungle right here. The Biddler and Ace Jungler have seen each other. Everybody just gonna, waiting for that actual engagement. These two are going to disengage. I'm looking down here that, you know, Shen may think he wants to 1v1, but he just missed his Shadow Taunt. And right now, I mean, Apollo has a Bloodfester. Oh, there comes the ult. It's going to be a 5v4 in that top lane. Then Luxo is going to go across the entire team. A two for none. Those moments when Shen oh, looks like he's going to lose and then gets three assists. Oh, no. That is not good. And he, and he tried so... I mean, down bottom, we had Varus trying so hard to kill that Shen before he left, but no do. 
I think they're going to get a Baron out of this. There's nothing that's going to stop them. They got 4-0. You just need to alternate the damage here between Lux, Biddler, and Lux Shields. Um, Ash has problems just sitting here poking back. There's and arrows. This... Uh, by the way, one thing I definitely want in my life is a quiver of endless arrows. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Ash OP. Oh, Apollo, if you get caught here... Ouch. That's gonna that's gonna happen. That's gonna be a thing. If he gets caught, if he got caught though. If he got caught, he was going to die. <laughs> well, this game quickly went from being a nice lead to a <laughs> to they are no longer in the lead. They're actually down, uh, you know, thousand gold. They're also you know, and right now with this Baron buff, they're gonna be able to siege up. They're gonna be able to get, reclaim some of these turrets. The spot lane outer turret where they can send Shen to split push. This mid lane turret where they haven't had, you know, much for map control purposes. And right now what we really need is an honest team fight. Like we need a five V five, we need Varus involved, we gotta have we gotta get a team fight here to see this proof of concept of battle which we haven't had yet. And the longer the game goes on, the more dangerous it gets to lose a proof of concept. The death timers are going to be longer. Uh, the gold lead could swing dramatically one way or the other. You could lose before you actually had a chance to prove that your team fight could actually win. And there's the prison going down, and Jarvin's going to start helping. So you're going to waste gonna a have to there. get this out of here. Zach's going to hop back in. Laser almost going to catch Huggy right in the face. But everybody's going to walk away from that. No worse for wear, but a dragon attempt now coming out of the Biddler. Yeah, so these guys should be able to claim Dragon. That's going to be one more objective that they can add, you know, as as consolation of getting Baron. And that nice, you know, four for none in top lane, that was huge for them. Yeah, and that was, I mean, and especially since uh, the gold that Shen was trying to get wasn't his to have. Shen coming in there that last minute, now getting this middle turret, uh, just his ability to show up and get out of there in time I was I was caught off guard. I thought Shen wasn't gonna make it. Are so this could be an, this could be a strong engage for them. Oh, they just missed the. Uh, I mean, this is what we were talking about in champs like, which was one team's gonna want to engage and one team's gonna be using. Oh, the Ash Arrow coming in. They're gonna catch Biakia. He's gonna go down. Here goes the tidal wave followed by the Zyro. Zach is gonna come back in. There goes the ult. Bidler's gonna go down first. Hard gets the red team. Jim Huss is going to try to ult Aframu. Apollo is picking up kills here. He's got an attack here. They're going to pick up Hysterium. Maybe no. The red buff is this jungler going to chase here. Does have this cape and the red buff. And meanwhile, Aframu in a lot of trouble. Whoop. He's backpelling. He is kiting. He's got those volleys for days. But right now we're seeing a one for three. And that right, oh, and the big leap coming all the way in the back now as Ace the Jungler is going to use his passive to get out of this. Oh, the snipe on Varus is going to take an alpha move from long range. Nope, not even going to have to use his passive. Ace the Jungler making it out of there just safe and sound, doing a little flexy show on the way out. We're going to pick up that mid turret, and, you know, that was a huge fight for them. We are dead even in gold. These are two really strong engagement teams. <laughs> it seems like whoever starts second wins. <laughs> I oh man, I mean, it's it's even hard to cast because as soon as everybody presses alts and these get these, I like the, I like these these alts from these team compositions, right? You've got that Ash either engage or you know with her crystal of arrow, she can start the fight anytime she wants, or she can kind of use it to peel for herself. Meanwhile, you've got. Uh, it's massive cataclysm. Like it's one of the most unique abilities in the game, where the walls pop up. You know, you've got the box from Thresh, but it's not as strong as Cataclysm. Just where you have these physical walls, where it's one v one arena. Then you've got this tidal wave crashing through. But on the other side, you've got like the not so like glorified all. It's like like visually. Yeah. Like. And Varus ult, so I've never, like, sometimes you don't even know Varus hit you with his ult. You're like, the hell, I can't well, move. Well, that, in that last fight, if you caught that, Varus got all five enemy champions with that ultimate. It it wheedled its way right through there. It's all contagious and whatnot. Uh, that chain of corruption held the entire team down and was really a big factor in the winning of that fight. 
and yeah, I mean, and then Zach, even though Zach wasn't in that initial part of the fight, he was still able to show up. He was able to zone out. Um, well, Jacob, he there wasn't much he could do. He fired all of his spells, all of his cooldowns, and then eventually just kind of got chased down with that red buff and Sunfire Cave. Plus, Zach has perma slow. Everybody Plus, uh, slow. Perma chase ability with the elastic slingshot and the stretching strike. Oh, yeah, and we watched him leap back there and really facilitate uh, Varus getting that kill on Aframu. And now it looks like it's going to be a, a fight for this 100 health tower. Fight over, everybody leave. Mechanically, these guys are taking objectives. They gave up Baron, obviously, they're down in kills. Blue team, though, has six turrets, and you know this game is usually won by, by taking structures. Specifically the Nexus, not to be the Captain Obvious statement of the night, but hey, that's what I'm here for. Uh, yeah, I just need Aphromoo to start getting more kills, because right now you're really close. If he, uh, if he gets, if he gets two more kills, you're on this. Or three more kills, he's, yeah, I'm, not, I'm upset with you. I feel like there's going to be a couple more engages, um, a couple he, more He just needs to start pulling those Tristana Quadra kills. That we were seeing in game one. Yeah, I think another, you know, like, right now, like, they're in this lull phase, right? Everyone's going to go ahead and push out top. Baron's going to be up soon, uh, probably in a few minutes. You know, Shin's going to go down to split push. Like, we're going to be in this lull where there's going to be another clash, and there's going to be a massive, decisive, like... It'll be know, the proof of concept know, fight. It'll be the yeah. fight that decides who wins this game. Or at least regains, a, a, you know, a, a secure advantage. Oh, Shen now with his uh, with his fire belt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sees Varus hop out at him, and he says, "All right, fine. You want this lane pushing this direction? I'll allow it." Yeah. Apollo already level seventeen. He's got red buff. I mean, right now he's the game is in his hands. Right. He's he's got all the CS. He's got most of the kills. That can also carry this late game. Uh oh. Nice arrow. They're gonna catch Ace out. There's the counter initiate from Zyra. Fat stuck in Cataclysm. He is not gonna be able to get out. There's the slow factory. And Ooh. nobody going down, but everybody really low health. A big push right here. Any kind of big pressure keeping them in the mid is gonna allow Shen to get this bottom tower and really start that split push to its full advantage. Yeah, even if they send anybody down here in the bot lane, there's, there's not much they can do. That turret's going to go down. That mid lane turret is at literally a hair's breadth for being just knocked over and going down. Um, at any point, I mean, that's a scary thought, too, because let's say they get another hard engage from Ash Arrow or a Binding or, or one team goes hard and then Shin comes in. Like, that turret doesn't exist. I mean, right now it's preventing, you know, gold from being, you know, in their bank account. But... That's not going to stop, you know, if, if there's a bad engage, they're going to rush down mid. And, they're going to be able to get an inhibitor off of this. Yeah, exactly. So what, you I mean, that's what, I mean, no one's, I mean, only as spectators we can see this, right? We, you know, we're like, oh, blah, blah, blah. If they win a team fight, they're going to get like this plus plus and it. Like, as a player, you're not thinking like, oh, turret's a, oh, gosh. Oop, there's, there's the arrow coming about. out. It's going to hit we all. Matt dodged it. Laser coming down, but now Zach is in the back line. Zach's there's that bear. Hit. There's Big ultimate onto Jacob Hysteria, and engagement. Boom! One catch. Who else is going down? Two. Filler Will gonna we go down. Triple up kill. Off this. Apollo is able to get some death coming down here, but now he's gonna fall. And that, that right there. Sotslo, but that was a two for four. Zach getting away with like no health. And boom! That turret goes down. Like we were just saying, right now. I mean, these three right here have no problem going to be able to take this and you know this turret and possibly the, and likely the inhibitor. I mean, oh, death they got at this point. Seconds. They got 20 seconds before they have to worry. This is an inhibitor, easy. If Zach gets too close, it'll be inhibitor and a kill before the team can respond. Right now, they should be rotating bottom, getting another tower after this, and just keeping that gold lead trying to ca catch back up. And I have to say, uh, Setsulo and Aphromoo's team here has every single game been at a 10k lead when they've just uh, and been an absolutely decisive win. This game, though, has been neck and neck the entire time. Apollo's been able to do so much work down in the bot lane and been able to hold off 
so many of these engagements um, to a point where it's been it's been so even, and it'll continue being even until I don't know. We stop doing push-ups till Zach stops being such a huge <laughs> problem. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going to drive this fight into just being absolutely decisive. Um, I mean, I, again, I think right now both teams got to be careful with this Baron fight. Uh, both these teams want to go hard at each other, and right now, I mean, we're going to see that Apollo's team has like the vision control, right? They've got this Oracle. They've all respawned. They're saying, "Hey, you know, our inhibs down, but now we're we're gonna group up. We're not gonna. We shouldn't leave Baron, uh, if that possible. And and hopefully maybe we can get some sort of team fight. Uh, but it looks like Huggy, a little bit uh, in the scary position. But that's gonna be okay. Yeah, the other team had all gone back, and now they're just kind of waiting for this engage. They the enemy team now they know they have this one ward over here. When they take this down, they'll be able to either juke the Baron, get a good engagement off of this, or nothing will happen. We'll have to see her in just a moment. But this is the Baron dance. This is this dance through all Elos exists. So who will get this Baron, and who will win this? Who will win this? Who will win this fight? It looks like Violin's pushing. And here's the thing: they can always send Shen. You know, Shen's always going to be back up here by the time he even gets to the bot lane. If you want to, they get to the bot lane. Um, Mid lane's already pushing, so it's it's kind of you know what happens now because the red team has a clear advantage on Baron once they you know once they regain this vision control. And now Varus going to get spotted out at the bottom. Once you see it, one champion bottom, you really want to start putting that pressure on the Baron. Zyra is back right now. It would be a three v four engagement onto this Baron. Will they get their dream? And there's nothing they can do to stop because Shen can teleport in at any point in time. So Chen may walk away with a bot lane turret. They may also walk away with Baron. Oh. oh There's the big double laser. Double kill. It's that moment where you see two champions just disappear. And now, now this is a free Baron, free bot tower. Yeah, right now, um, they only got one real shot and maybe a steal. Uh, and no, not with Varus bot lane. Bear's bot lane, now it's a 2v4 around this Baron. This they need a, is possibly a Zack steal. Oh, Bear's... Oh, it's a Zack steal! It is a Zack steal! And oh, there's the Zyro that's going to knock everybody up on the way out. So Ace is going to take Baron. He's going to sacrifice his life for it, but he also got the steal. His passive also go down. So, I mean, a 1 for 3, but they got Baron. Uh, the problem is there's a lot of damage that can be done here. Uh, if they were decided to roll up mid, they could probably pressure those Nexus turrets. They're probably going to go top, take this outer turret, and extend that gold lead. Apremu grabbing this GA is just the correct answer. He knows they want him specifically. Varus just one hitting entire waves of minions. Too strong. Yeah, he should probably put on a Teemo hat. <laughs> I think GA is the counter to <laughs> to Varus. Yeah. <laughs> Varus walks in the bar. There's a bunch of Guardians Angels. Huh. Get it? Because there's a counter. Never mind. <laughs> bad jokes are bad. <laughs> Varus is getting more golds. Now sitting at almost 350 CS, six kills. Right now, I mean, you gotta feel pretty good about that. Like you're like, oh, okay, we were like on the brink. We we're gonna be in a bad situation where we lost in him. They were gonna get a free Baron. They walked in and steal it. Um, I'd be a little bit careful here. Oh, here comes that Ash Arrow. That Ash Arrow has a homing beacon on it, and it is is specifically focused on to Oriana. Ace to Jungler. Oh, Varus on the Fiddler. Oh, Apollo's going to be able to fight this. Just... Apollo's going to flash out a Cataclysm. They're turning now on the Jivas. They're not, they're not worried about that front line. And they're going to trade a one for none so far. That, want... arrow, that arrow into laser has been kind of like the story of the game. And I'm, I, I mean, watching that, it was a one for nothing, but that the fight was... Oh, oh the laser was like it just up. Oh my goodness. 3,000. 
Max cooldown reduction. This should be a free and him. I mean, attempting to tax, it's going to get really risky. Oh, and there's the engagement. Going to drop that Zyra down really quick, but they got to deal with this Varus. They want this inhibitor more than they want Varus. Oh, That's they're going the to be able right to answer. <laughs> Bat's going to get out of here for after one pops up. And oh! oh! And that Apollo was... with the triple kill. They did lose the inhibitor, though. They've got three up still. Uh, they're gonna actually going to march down mid lane. I don't know what else they could do here. Well, they have, they can send a march down mid lane, but they also have to clear these bottom lanes, this uh, top and bottom lane, get them pushing in the right direction if they're really going to still want to stay in this fight. They can't afford to lose an engagement like that. And that engagement right there solely went into their hands because they focused that inhibitor so hard. They put damage on it for at least like seven seconds longer than they needed to uh, when the rest of the fight was going on. Will they be able to claim a inhibitor of their own out of this? Nami now rushing down, J4 trying to hit this, trying to keep them off of it as long as possible. But just the focus and the power coming out of Varus is just educating them time and time again that they can't let him just stand there and do work. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to back out of here because that Ash will be up in five seconds. And that Ash arrow into Lux all is just bad news bears for anybody that gets caught. I mean, the damage alone on Lux laser, I, let's take a look at that real quick. 960 damage every, I don't know, like 30, 40 seconds. Uh, 33. 33 seconds. Yeah, that seems strong. <laughs> yeah, she has business to take care of. Ash, by the way, does... Ash Arrow does 600 damage. <laughs> That's a 1600 damage nuke from, like, half a screen away. Yep. 3,000, baby. 3,000. Anywhere in there. So right now, we're, it's kind of like that, That like, all right, now what? You know, Baron's not up. We don't really want to get out of, you know, out of place for Dragon. They've got Shen top. And looks like Varus might try to go up here and see if he can do some work with Shen. Uh, Dragon's going to go for free, no problem. And this is kind of that moment where Shen's up top kind of distracted and pulling a little split push maneuver. This big wave coming down bottom. You have Aphromoo out here to lead it. If there's no reaction to this, it's either going to be a base race or they have to come back and fight. And we have now two blue pills, three blue pills coming down. Takes eight seconds to get you back there. This fight's going to happen right underneath turret. Let's go home guard. Oh, home guard boots. The best addition to anything in the universe. <laughs> Definitely Man. extended some games a little bit. The lane clear coming out of Oriana is just unstoppable at this point, too. That bot lane going to get moved around. Now you have a little trappy bush sitting down here. Everybody waiting to kind of figure out where they are. Zach hopping into bush one. Not going to be found. He's going to drop a ward down there. And this is oh, that moment. this is a Everybody, trap. Everybody's super cautious, super patient. Here's the thing. All your damage, if you're a Team Apollo, is up top. And he can't stop. Oh, he's going to hit him with the... This. I don't know. Is Shane going to ult out of this? No, no he's, he's not. He's going to flash that wall. Uh, but now they know Varus' ult is down. It is a lot safer to engage right now. Oh, honey. Boom! One. to give Zach hopping into the back line. Aphromoo, perfect positioning, going to be able to hold. Oh! Oh! What and the? I have never seen a golden idol be picked up into the air by a bubble. Oh, Ace, you're a little deep, bro. Where's the rest of your team? It's the oh, J4 first. That's the helping. There's I another Zerkas. Toast. That's not good. Two for none. They got, they're going to have multiple pressure coming up here, and I think Shin ult is still up. They could turn this into a free and hit, or they could turn this into a hit, no problem. Even Biller a little low, though. Biller's probably going to back out here. No reason for him to stay. Paul's like, come at me, bro. 1v5, I got this. <laughs> this is the moment where you move that fight away from this bottom turret, and you take it to that mid where it's already safe. Ooh, Aphromoo throwing that ult down. Oh, and there's that. this big pickup on Zach. Biddler coming back in, but now Biddler's going to probably get picked up. 
Oh, you heard the sound oh, for the kill. cataclysm, but the walls never came up. Another tower is down. They're going to keep putting pressure onto this inhibitor. Will they sacrifice lives for the inhibitor again, or will have they have learned their lesson from the last fight and get out of here in time? Oh, Ace is back up. Oh, got taunted out of the last six slingshot. Not going to make any plays and also a bind. Right now, they're now down two inhibitors. And that is going to free the map up with that all three lanes pushing the direction. Uh, we have Sulo's team gets to go back, use that gold advantage that they've been storing up for the last I don't know how long. It's only 1k now as well. They're going to have free reign over this Baron, and they're going to be able to make a play. Getting caught at this Baron right now would be the death of everybody. Varus has to know that. Varus has to know that he cannot play in this pool. Oh, it looks like this is what we call an almost desperation Baron. They're all in on this Baron. There's a lot of damage here. Apollo is nearly fully itemized. They're Barons that have health. They have vision on this. Barons that are quarter health. Are they going to be able to burst it down and get the smite before the laser come across? Here comes the tidal wave. Shin is now on the front line. Here comes the Zakal. He's actually just going in and then just being a distraction. The Varus all missed. The Taunt's not going to hit anybody, but Aphromoo, I guess that's, if that's one person you want to hit, that's the one. And now we're going to see a massive Ooh. disengage. Uh, well, you're down two turrets, <laughs> or down two inhibitors. You can sneak a Baron. This is definitely going to keep them in the game. We are now at 71, almost 72k of peace. Oh, man. A lot and of that engagement just here. staying too far back on that, really needing to get up there behind him and be able to force more damage onto that. The regen now alone uh, coming off that Baron is going to be so clutch as they come back into this fight. But this might be one of those games that we get to see wrap around that one hour mark. All right. Now, I mean, the thing is, the th this is like Ash's time to shine. Like, we know Afrin's Afrin move, but if we're just talking to Champion, like, at this point in game, where everybody does a truckload of damage, like, it, even if it doesn't matter where you are, and Ash will hit you, bam, there's 600 damage. You know, minus resist, whatnot. Potential Lux Laser. I mean... All you gotta do is get caught, so catch one person out and it's almost over. And what we have right there, uh, in that last fight, that Ash Arrow hitting Baron probably cost them a lot more than it helped. He had thought that Baron would be down just to right around then. It was either going for the steal or going for the engage, but hitting it not doing anything on top was not what he had hoped for. So, now here comes the C, the team of Baron actually getting out sieged. I guess this is what happens when you're down two inhibitors. Apollo has so much gold, <laughs> sitting at 450 CS, 45 minutes into this game. <laughs> 21,000 gold in the bank. He is fully itemized at this point. There's nowhere but up for him to go. He has sold boots for more damage, picking up, picking up the Zephyr. If they can get to Apollo, game over. I think, though, I mean, that's going to be the trouble. I think this is where, like, we said, hey, the team with the engage, like, they're going to use it to counter-engage. <laughs> oh, but Whoa. Zach is actually going to go in hard. They're followed by Fat. Wow, Afro Afro Moo got insta-gimmed. Godlike. Miller's going to follow with the count because he's going to trap three people. Oh, here comes the chase. they got to worry about their base, though. Jivas next to go down with the shiv all triple cool for Afro Moo. And, oh, man, <laughs> they're paying it for the inhibit, but someone's got to protect this base. Good super minions are streaming in. Looks like Yaka is going to do that. Meanwhile, Apollo, Fat, and Huggy are on the on the beaten feet, headed toward. They say, "Hey, we got to get that hit, guys. We got to come away with something." That was a huge team fight. Death timers are sitting at sixty. Now we have, but luckily for luckily, we do have Lux still up. And Lux is a scary member of their team. That laser coming down the aisle may be able to just hold them away from taking the Nexus turrets. There's an inhib. That's a good start. I don't think they can finish, even though they got timers here. Are they going to be able to get a Nexus turn out of this? Dun Dun Ace and Fad rotating damage. Oh, no, this is... Oh, what the hell? They're actually putting a lot of pressure. Lux is going to catch Apollo, but it's not going to do enough damage. Oh, they're Oof. wasting a lot of time here. Ash is going to be up in three seconds. That Crystal Arrow is also going to be up. Oh, Fat had to zone There's the arrow! Oh, oh, no! This is the first arrow that missed. But Tidal Wave, Fat's in a lot of trouble. Everything has been exhausted for Fat. He's just going to hang around uh, let his team get out. I think if they were to focus that second Nexus turret, they would have been some damage. 
But they would have lost more champions in that, and that was the right time to get out of there, maybe even a little bit late, as this big push now in retaliation, it's going to be a 5v4 for the next minute. Uh, a big piece of their damage, that late game Vladimir is missing now. They have to, they have to hold the line here. Uh, if they are able... Whoa. And then Team Blue Pill showed up. They need to take down these inhibitors. If they can drop all three of these inhibitors at the same time, getting those bonus, oh, is bonus it worth waves. Die, I don't know if it's worth it if he dies, but they... Oh, they were... Wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's worth it. Their Apollo's down for 60 seconds. They still have Ash. They have Super Minions streaming it in. This is another... This is the third inhib? Or, well, this is they're going to get all three inhibs. If they're able to take all three of these inhibitors down, this is incredibly bad. Vladimir just now coming back up here in five seconds. Uh, Aframu hitting minions and heading bottom as fast as he can, just wasting these minion waves with all of that damage. They have another 35 seconds before Apollo will be there. This, this, is, a, this is a hurtful situation. Oh, this here's comes the Oh, a lot of cooldowns wasted. Not much in exchange. Oh, here comes Dash. She's got the GA back up. The laser is not going to hit anybody. It's the first laser that whiffed. They're going to double bubble in an opera mood. Jacob still alive. I can't know where we the first to go down, but Fat is going to be in there. And he's going to pop. He's going to survive. He's going to take one out attack. Opera mood still alive. No one's really going down. Why right? won't people oh. die? Everyone's gonna take out Oh, but he has burns to the whole guard boost! Boom! He's gonna take out Nobby, he's gonna take out Ash! He's gonna pick up a triple kill! And then and there was Lux. Right. Oh, and the laser missed again! Oh no! The entire. Is Jacob. I don't think he can all actually hold this. Is he gonna rush down for that Nexus? I believe he is. I believe he's oh, going no. for the Nexus right now. Oh no! What is this gonna go? This is gonna happen! It is oh, going to be a Lux. Lux one. This is going to be a Lux for Vars. They are marked. We just hit the 50 minute mark. They have 30 seconds minimum on anyone. Oh, this is Lux plus GA versus Super Fed Vars. I was going to start. Oh, this one spell that I missed. He might just go right for the next. Oh, the light binding. Oh, he cleanses the binding. <laughs> and the ultimate's back up. And there's the huge burst. And oh, we have nine seconds for shit. Oh, this he's just the falling game. off! The, oh, the binding also missed! What a deck! Two attack! Oh, the deck just went down! Oh my god, GG! <laughs> oh, wow. I've never seen a game like that in my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> wow. I feel like at the end there, the, the just everybody wanted to continue their strategy of hyper aggression, and that that just be, made it a complete crapshoot. It was, it was skill level was out the window. It was literally just who's going to hit everybody in the face the hardest. Bear is coming back up and getting that ult, being able to pull down Afro move right there at the end of that entire engagement right there. Really clutched that game for their team. Congratulations on the win for Judgment Week Three. This was impressive. Oh, good work, Team Apollo. Um, fantastic work. Actually, uh, there was like 17,000, 18,000 viewers on, on uh, Off Romo's stream at some point. So a lot of people tuned in to see a little bit of judgment. A lot of players here getting uh, their, their names out there and uh, well played. So huge kudos. I think Callan's got everything he needs to make a top five place video from one game. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, I can confirm this. <laughs> that that ending was seriously like I oh my gosh I could not help but scream during the end of that game it was so awesome and you know the thing is too is that Apollo is like one of those captains that I saw like week one week two did really well with his teams even though he was losing and then week three to like win and then not only win against like Afro Moose Atsula team like that's actually really huge yeah so uh, everybody be looking for him in LCS uh, season season two. Season three? <laughs> Coming Apollo up right? <laughs> yeah. So that's week three we're going to wrap up. Um, well, actually, go ahead, Cal. Not to interrupt. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So, thank, you guys, 
thank you guys for watching. You can see you can follow our social media right there if you want to catch uh, the next week of the league. It'll be uh, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Sorry, 7 p.m. here on this channel. So make sure you click the follow button. We're gonna have lots of guest kind of players, kind of like Afromu, hopefully coming in as captains, kind of pulling players. And if you want to find out more information, you can go to the Battlefy link that I'm about to post uh, to find out more about the league. But also, we will have a contest to wrap up. So uh, I will be pinging you on Facebook. Whoever did win, I'm gonna go tally it up, see who was closest. Katie and CS, and then uh, I will be handing out your RP. So uh, Dom and Joe, I guess, good good games, and you guys can uh, close it out. I'm going to tell you who won. It was this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. All right, thank you very much for joining us uh, week three. I am the help from Area of Defect. Um, sitting here with your weapons media, I got the Padocast. I also got uh, Hi, Win Kane. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in and listening to our beautiful, sultry voices lull you into a false sense of security. Good night.